Mayor Malamapono, and welcome to our training today. So we're going to go over what we've been working on today for lesson four. So as you can see in the background, Lance and Jacob are working on the drill that they learned today, and we're going to break that down how we got there. So in the beginning, of course, we want you to review what we already trained in. And to review that, that's going to be opening up with showing respect. So we would be here and we would do our salutation. And then unique to our class from SGM Rick Alamany, we add to that that we come in peace, we look for and see the good feathers, and we trade in mutual respect. Following this, we do our basics that we reviewed before coming from our Baijiao. So we're going to cross and roll. Our feet are also doing that into our silk horse or goat riding posture. Going into our Wu Sao, we would then review our single Chung Choi, followed by our double Chung Choi. And then switching, and then triples. From there, we work on reviewing the Pak Sao. And then we go into the asking hand, or Tan Sao. And the new technique for today is Gan Sao. So, if you're paying attention, you'll notice that there's a subtle transition that we work on in between each movement. And all of these work with this angular circular force that is encapsulating the control of the center line. So, when we're doing the Pak Sao, if you were looking at it from above, it's like the shape of an almond, right? Or an eye, like the all-seeing eye. And we're going around the center of that eye as we go around. Then when we work in the ton, it's like a World War I dogfight where the one plane is doing a barrel roll. So let's say you had a Sopwith camel and a, a Fokker, like Red Baron type of uh, triplane. Then they're going, so on a simplistic level, you'll see people just doing this for the way that we train it. We have a little bit more of an organic transition. Then going into the gun. <laughs> you still have that circular angular compression. So, coming from the center line, cutting forward and down. So basically at the end of the motion, you are at the end of the motion, at your center line, on your Tan Tian, compressing that line. Now, those are the first three basic defenses we're going to put those into action now with the footwork. So, to review, in the last lesson, we worked on our step and drop footwork, where we're in our Wu Sao. If your left hand is lead and your left foot is lead, then you're going to be going left, right, left, right, and going backwards the same motion. Meaning that when we're going forwards, your left foot and left hand have that but up, but up timing. And going backwards, it's in a reverse motion. Where if I'm striking with the left hand, the right foot is moving back. And the feet still have that elastic motion to where at the end you're still basically the width that you would be on a skateboard or a snowboard, where you're in very much a good position to have both stability and mobility. So any posture, any stance is a function of empowering and enabling those two factors of mobility and stability. Then when we put that into motion, you're going to see what Jacob and Lance are doing behind me. And that is in the beginning, they were reviewing where one person 
is doing the center line blast. The other person is just measuring that with their footwork. Really the goal is that both people are working on their step and draw footwork going forward and back. Then to enhance that, we're gonna add some realism, which is what you can see behind us right now. And that is that while one person is doing the two punches, the other person is drawing in, pulling in that attack in the future it'll be to draw an ambush. And they're executing the pox cells on center line. So as one person comes in with the blast, the other person is receiving the blast with the pox out. And then we are gonna level that up and be able to do that with all of our different attacks. So with that review, let's add to this and we're gonna bring Lance and Jacob into the picture. So gentlemen, take a break. Lance, come on over here. So again, you have a real unique opportunity here with different sizes and structures. So in the beginning, he sets up his Wu Sao and I'm just receiving his incoming shot. So as he comes in with his double punch, go, I'm moving backward. One more. Now if we're gonna reverse that, he's gonna hold for me, okay? So he sets up his, I'm gonna come into him. All right? Then we're gonna build that up into the active defensive drill. So the active defensive drill is that He's set up on his line to attack where he's gonna be punching left, right. I'm set up in Wu Sao here. Now, as he comes into attack, I'm going to be deflecting that attack. One more. All right, now it's gonna be his turn. I'm gonna supply him with the attack, okay? All right, so that's the basic drill they were working on first. Now let's try that with Jacob here, so Jacob's gonna come into the picture. Same exact drill. He sets up his Wu Sao, right? Set up your Wu Sao. And he's gonna be punching, and I'm receiving his punch. So go ahead, and one more set. Good. Now he's gonna hold for me, right? So, good. Now, we're gonna make that an active technique where we're gonna apply this going from walk to crawl to run Okay, so this is gonna be that middle stage. Where now when he sets up for his punches, and he's gonna punch with his lead hand first, I'm gonna receive that with the pox house. Go ahead, and again. Now he's gonna receive mine, ready? Or he's gonna to try to receive mine. <laughs> it's okay, it's first day, first day trying this. So, in concept, what you wanna see though, is that your defense is not just the defensive pox out. It's also the distance. So when his hand is out here, to, to train it, I want the distance to be honest. So if he extends his hand, I want it to touch my face, right? Now, if you think about it, just the pock alone, that deflection, it would just miss. Now in addition to that, we're using that step and draw footwork. So just the footwork alone, he would just miss. So now if you set up as you're about to punch, right? And he'll go half speed this time so you can see it. As he hits, now if I only use distance, go ahead, he misses, okay? Now, if I only use the pocket, don't move, ready? Go, 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 go. See, these would have hit me. So just having good technique can save you, and, hit again, having good distance can save you, all right? Now when you use them together, go ahead, when you use them together, now I've got the control and the distance. Now, where we're gonna play with this later on in a future lesson is you're gonna re-enter, trap his incoming attack, and then you're gonna counterattack, or on a high level, your defense is your attack. Now, what that would look like would be, as he would come in with that first punch, I'm already hitting, right? Or I wait for the second one. He goes to the first one, boom. Okay, so then it's like 
the wind changing direction or the backwash of a wave hitting a seawall and coming right back at you. So there's that concept. Okay, so we'll bring, uh, we'll bring Lance back in to show that concept. And this is really a delight when you have, you know, these big size differences because it really illustrates how if you really get deep into your technique, it won't really matter because you're gonna have to, in real life, you're gonna have to improvise, adapt, and overcome. Okay, so he comes in with his shot, right? I wanna already be where I would have to see my dentist, right? And then, in an ideal world, your technique would be such that it could save you. Punch again. My technique, punch again, could save me. If I know where that center line point is, you can do it. Although, at home, you might not want to be looking at a video camera and having someone punch you in the face, because it takes a little bit of extra skill to do that. But, in concept, all the years of training are enabling that in this moment. Now, in addition to that, we have the distance control. So, I started out here. He does his second punch, boom. He punches again, boom. He punches again, boom. And I'm just out of the way, right? Now, if it's his turn, okay? You're gonna actually do the, the, the defense, okay? His turn, I come in, he goes, pock, 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 pock. But he's really doing the distance control as well because he's doing the footwork. So in your ideal world, you're going to isolate, just being good at the individual defense. You're gonna isolate, just being good at your measured step and draw footwork as you recede to the incoming pressure. You're gonna isolate your ability to actually perform the blast. You're gonna isolate your ability to perform the blast with your step and draw footwork coming into them, right? And this is all on center line. Later on in real life, we're gonna use a lot of angles. We're not gonna stay right in front of the pressure, but this is a good way to develop temerity and courage. Because if he's used to this coming always at his face over and over again, there's gonna come a point where then it doesn't affect him as much. And that's important because in the end, we don't want to ever be controlled by fear or anger because no good decision is ever made out of anger or fear. Good decisions are made out of courage and love. And so we want to use our training to help us become the aloha that we hope to see in the world. So with that, come back up on in, gentlemen. And we're going to give our salutation to our friends out there. Ready and... Xing Li. We come in peace. We look forward to seeing the good in others. We train in mutual respect. Aloha.